the requirements have. We'll be covering that today. All right. So I hope everyone's downloaded Snapseed. I will be stop, stopping my screen share now so I can see everyone. If you have the app downloaded, I want you to raise your hand using the reaction button over here. You can raise your hand. So I want to see if you have all downloaded the Snapseed app. I can see what half of you have. What about the other half? It's a small app. It's not too long. Uh, if you haven't downloaded it yet, I recommend that you download it soon. Download it soon so that you can follow along. All right. Once you've done that, I want you to actually open the app right now. Um, if you're using your phone to join this meeting, I recommend that you don't leave the meeting, but you can close it and have it running in the background so you can still hear me. Or if you have another phone with you, then you can take another take that phone, uh, download Snapseed on that, and you can follow along as we go through this uh, short editing tutorial of some sorts. All right, uh, you can lower your hands now, and once you have your app open and ready, I want you to raise your hands again. Actually, download and download. Yes, uh, download the app Snapseed. Um, and in the meanwhile, uh, Roland, if you can make me the host, then I can share my phone screen as well. I hope you're all able to see my phone screen now. Um, we'll be using the app Snapseed for our editing. And if you're able to see my phone, okay, I think you, you should be able to see my phone. So this is what the app would look like. Um, as you can see here, right next to my settings button, there's an app called Snapseed, the second row from the top. And I'll be opening that. And I would recommend all of you to open your app as well. And as soon as you open your app, it will look something like this. Uh, okay, someone has requested for the name Snapseed and it's by Google. All right, so as soon as you open your app, you will probably not see this. You will see a small plus icon in the center. And I would recommend that you click on that plus icon and then it'll open up your files or your gallery and you'll be able to select a picture for you to edit. And then I want you all to uh, pick a random picture that you have on your phone. It could be a picture of your dog or a picture of a flower that you've clicked. Uh, this was just a random picture that I had on my phone. So I picked this picture and I'll be editing by showing and demonstrating on this. Once you've selected your picture, you can just uh, tap on it and select open, and then you'll be greeted with this, mess uh, with this screen. Um, just to make sure that we're all on the same page, I want, um, I want to give a few seconds so that everyone can get to the stage and then we will proceed. Okay, so those who have raised your hands, I want you to lower your hands now. And if you've all come, uh, if you've all opened the app, then I want you all to put a thumbs up uh, through the reactions button. And by doing that, I will know that you are on the same page. Okay, um, I'm seeing most of you have put a thumbs up. And for those who are, if you have any doubt, you can just unmute yourself and ask, and then I'll be able to, I'll be glad to help you. Um, if you have any doubts, you can ask. If you do not, then we will proceed from this point forward. All right. So once you come to this page, you are presented with a few options in the bottom over here. All these are just some quick settings, you could say, some quick uh, presets to. Uh, edit, your, uh, edit your photo using some automated settings. 
um i usually do not use them but in case you are in a hurry and you find yourself uh, having to use them and or if you feel like the edit was uh, the way that you wanted it to be then you can select the uh, edit and you can click on tick mark on the bottom uh, if not you can go into the main uh, editing suite you could say and that's so you click on tools when you click on tools you'll be greeted with this screen over here where you have a lot of options here to choose from and all of those have different functions i'll be explaining a few of those um, but based on our requirements the first few things that we need to learn um, i'll be covering those first all right so as you can see i've clicked this picture and the exposure or the brightness level is pretty decent it's not overexposed and then it's not too dark either uh, so the first thing that we'll do is to click on the first option called tune image all right um, if you didn't follow that the first option top left tune image is what we'll be selecting now the effect uh, that you are currently using will be displayed in the top as you can see there's um, there's the title called brightness at the very top um, you're able to see that you're able to see here that uh, I'm currently under the brightness tab. All right. So when I'm using the brightness tab, and when I move, when I, I can tap anywhere on the screen, I can tap at the top or bottom. And as long as I move my finger to the left or right, it'll automatically increase and decrease the brightness based on whether I'm going left or right. If I go to the left, it gets darker. And if I go to the right, it gets brighter. Now, keep in mind that the app any editing app can only work with what is already present in the photo. So when you're clicking a picture, it's always recommended that you click the picture the best way possible. And uh, you leave editing to be a few minor touches at to the end. Don't rely mainly on editing um, because there's only so much that you can uh, do while editing. Like if you, were to, if you were to take a picture that's completely dark, uh, you will not be able to get back all the details by simply increasing the brightness over here all right so try to get the picture as close to how you want it to be while clicking the picture itself all right so once you've come to a brightness level that um, you are happy with uh, for this case i really don't want to increase the brightness anywhere so i'll leave it at zero and what you can do is you can uh, access the other settings within this tools uh, part by tapping on this settings button at the bottom here all right here you can see there are a few other tools uh, you can select from contrast, saturation, ambiance, highlights, shadows, and warmth. Contrast is basically adding more contrast to the picture or decreasing contrast to the picture. Um, usually I don't decrease contrast anywhere. Um, if you want your pictures to be a little more punchy, then you can increase it a little bit. Uh, don't go overboard. Sometimes uh, it's easy to go overboard. So keep it at a level that you're satisfied with. And once you do so, then you can go on to the next setting. Now, a quick tip is instead of having to tap here each time and then select scroll up to your setting, what you can do is as long as you move your finger up and down, you'll be able to quickly browse through all the settings. You don't have to tap on the bottom each time. You can just push up or push down and then it'll automatically go. And then left and right is to adjust the particular setting. All right. So that's a quick tip. Okay. So we finished uh, contrast. Now we're at saturation. Saturation is basically the colors, all right? So if you reduce the saturation, everything's gonna be gray and washed out, no colors. And uh, it's gonna be very black and whitish. It'll remove all the colors. And be careful of this uh, as well. If you increase the saturation too much, then it's gonna look very artificial and it will not look too good. But in case you're taking a picture and you feel like a little more color would look nice, then you would adjust this and increase it a little bit over here, all right? Once you finish the saturation, um, the ambient setting is basically, um, I would put it as uh, an automatic uh, setting to adjust your brightness, contrast, and a few other things. I don't use it often, but it helps me uh, when I'm taking pictures of things like sunsets and or sunrises. And then it adjusts the shadows and some of the darkness. Um, I don't recommend going too crazy with this either. Uh, and uh, again, uh, when you're editing, do not go too far to the right or too far to the left. 
uh, unless it's uh, absolutely needed because then uh, the picture will just look very different and very weird all right so you can experiment with this by having um, like after the class you can open different pictures and then you can try all these settings one by one and see what uh, what setting you like and how how they behave based on the picture it may look like one thing on this picture it may it may look different for you on your phone all right highlights now highlights affect uh, basically the bright areas of your picture all right so if you look carefully i'm i'm able to reduce or increase the highlights and now let's say you're taking pictures of uh, the sky and the clouds are a little too bright then if you're able if your camera has uh, captured enough detail within the highlights then you'd be able to adjust it here and bring the highlights a little down and you'll still be able to get some details uh, usually that's uh, how it's done where you can sure i can turn my phone to landscape all right so yes highlights deal with the bright areas of your picture so if you have a picture that is mm, let's say you're taking a selfie and um, the background is very dark but your face is very bright then you if you were to adjust the highlights it'll not affect the shadowy areas around you but it'll affect the bright areas of your face like highlights there's the opposite the shadows and this affects mainly the darker areas of your picture uh, and it'll leave the highlights pretty much uh, untouched but they try to form a balance so that just doesn't look too strange so it'll slightly affect the highlights as well but shadows basically deal with the darker areas of the picture all right and suppose you take a picture that is um, let's say almost uh, well exposed but it's a little dark then you can come here and increase the shadows uh, setting a little bit because if you increase the brightness directly then everything will become bright okay keep in mind the first setting brightness makes everything bright or everything dark and by adjusting highlights and shadows individually you're able to control those particular areas uh, without affecting the whole picture as a whole all right warmth is uh, another setting that uh, it's not just controllable here there's another place to control but um, th this option is here so that you can make the picture warmer as you can see it becomes more yellower and if you go the opposite way it becomes colder and you can see it becomes bluer so that's another uh, term that we use in photography warm and cold um, we call it temperature color temperature so when you go cold um, then everything looks blue and cold uh, but when you go warm everything looks yellow orange and hot okay so that is another setting that is present within that first uh, settings option when you're done with this you can click on that check mark on the bottom right uh, and then you will it will keep the settings and you can proceed with the other settings that you want to check all right um, at the top right you will be able to see a small settings by pressing that you'll be able to see before and after of your picture let's say i were to change um, let's say saturation if i brought it all the way down and i want to compare it before editing and after editing how it looks then i can tap that button uh, you'll have to press and hold because the moment you let go, it goes back to how it is now. So if you want to compare it to how it was before, you have to tap and hold. The moment you let go, it will come back to how, how it was. All right. Once you're happy with the picture that you have so far, you can click on the tick mark on the bottom right and you will get like this. All right. This was just the first few uh, settings that were within this tune image option over here. If you've had any doubts so far, I would recommend that we clear that before we proceed uh, for no particular reason, but it's better to clear because it's very, because um, these are some of the basics. So I would like to clear that before we proceed. And if you've understood everything so far, uh, then I would ask you to, again, put a thumbs up in the reactions thing so that I can, uh, I can see that you've all understood. Okay, a few of you have understood. Since most of you are not, since all of you are not turning on your cameras, I'm I, I'm going to not, I'm not going to know if you understood or not, all right? So 
I need you to react and show me that you've understood so that I don't have to uh, spend too much time waiting for your responses, all right? So you can raise your hand or you can give a thumbs up if you've understood. Um, all right, I see that most of you have understood. For those who did not understand, you can uh, watch this recording later and you can proceed, all right? All right, the next setting is details, all right? Top, uh, we're looking at the top row first, uh, the details setting. When you open the detail settings again, um, you're gonna have you're gonna have this bottom center option thing throughout. Okay, any settings that you go through in Snapseed, you'll have this bottom setting, uh, and then these are all the mini sub settings within that. So for the details section, when you come to structure, um, basically it's uh, it's like adding uh, a level of sharpness and details. All right. Uh, both these settings can be tweaked around a little bit, but uh, if you have a blurred picture or a picture that is not clear at all, mm, simply adding some sharpness here is not going to fix that. All right, uh, it, it's it's like uh, the, the picture that you take is uh, the food that you prepare. All right, but uh, after preparing the food, you can obviously add some condiments, some flavor, some salt, pepper, but the food as a whole will remain as it is, all right? And unless you do some very uh, uh, different, like advanced level of editing, then the food will not become something else. Okay, so keep that in mind. Uh, when clicking the picture and expecting to edit it later, uh, you should try to get it as close as possible to perfect as you can when you're clicking the picture itself and leave less work for editing because it'll save a lot of time that way. All right, so structure, as you can see, uh, enhances the edges of the, picture, of the picture. So if you look at the edges of the flower, since the flower is pretty much in focus, there was no need to worry about anything. Uh, but as you can see, the background, uh, everything becomes a little hazy, a little blurry. And if I move to the right, then it increases the structure and everything becomes a little more, uh, everything pops out a little more. And usually I would not recommend going all the way as well. And you can adjust it based on how you find it. And if it's up to your liking, then you can proceed from there, all right? Sharpening too, uh, for this particular picture, I don't have to increase the sharpness because my focus was fine and I feel like it's sharp enough. So I don't need to continue. All right, so I'll click on the X button there. Now, continuing on to the next option, the curves, option here is going to be the most advanced setting that we can uh, access from a whole list of settings here. And curves can pretty much uh, do a lot. Uh, I will not explain everything, but I will explain a few basics here so that you'll have an understanding. But uh, usually for those who are beginning, I would recommend that you do not touch this uh, until you understand it to a, to a different level, all right? You can see there's a small box to my right. Um, you can see that there's this graph over here. And using that graph is how we will be adjusting the curves setting for this, all right? So the, how, how does this uh, graph work? Uh, you can see there's a small, uh, I don't know if you can see clearly on your screens, but You can see there's a small hill-like shape over here. I'm hoping you're able to see that, all right? There's a small hill-like shape that goes up and down, up and down, up and down. Now, this is... Uh... Okay, this is the histogram uh, of your picture. It basically shows the values of your bright areas and your dark areas and your uh, and the areas in between. So by adjusting uh, different points on this graph, we are able to manipulate that particular part. And what do I mean by this? I'll explain right now. So um, the high the high part over here to the top right uh, deals with your highlights or the brighter parts of your picture. If I were to bring that down then you'll notice how everything becomes darker, all right? That is your highlights. Now, <clears throat> everything works a little um, 
differently. So I'd recommend you pay a little attention here. And the bottom left is to do with your uh, shadows or your darker areas. So if I were to bring that up, you can see that the picture instantly becomes white. Now, if I were to bring this completely up, then that means there's <clears throat> no shadows at all. And there's no nothing. Everything just becomes white. And likewise, if I were to bring the highlights all down, then everything just becomes dark, all right? So we can refrain from doing that. And the middle part over here has to do with the mid tones, all right? So this is the area of the picture that is not too, uh, this, is not the, this is not the highlights or the shadows. This is the part in between. Uh, most pictures, this is what you affect. The, if you go up and down, then this is, uh, it affects the mid tones in the sense, uh, most pictures that you take are hopefully going to be properly exposed uh, without being too bright or without being too dark. So in that case, this is what you will be adjusting over here. Now, before I proceed from here, actually, I want to explain the histogram to you even more. Um, the histogram functions uh, in a way that is from left to right. Okay, so the left side of the histogram, the left side of the histogram over here is to do with your shadows. Uh, if your mountain, let's say your mountain is coming like this over here, and then it goes like this, like this, like this, like this. That means there is more towards your shadow side, all right, to your left side. And the more the mountain is to your left, then the it means that your picture is dark and underexposed. And if your mountain is towards your right, then that means your picture is overexposed. Ideally, you want your mountain to be somewhere in the middle over here. Okay, so you want it to be uh, not too much to the left side or too much to the right side. Um, you can see here that this picture was exposed uh, decently and the spikes are not too far to the left. If the spikes were coming, let's say uh, something like this and then went here like this, then that means uh, this area I am under exposed and I am losing detail there. So. Keeping that in mind, I want you to understand that um, a histogram is best that uh, you keep it like this here in the center. Uh, <laughs> I understand it might be a little uh, complicated to understand this part, but this applies for pictures, not just taken on your phone. It applies for cameras and professionals and not just in phone photos, but also in videos. So, and this is used by professionals everywhere. So even though the picture may look like it is uh, properly exposed, the picture may look like it is uh, perfect. Uh, it is not always accurate representation. Uh, to our eyes, it may look fine, but uh, we may be lacking details. For example, now I don't know if there are any details in the shadowy areas over here or in that small black spot over there. But by looking at the histogram, I can see that uh, most of my shadows are uh, not crushed everything is, uh, I'm having details there. And the picture is not, the histogram is not going too far to the right. So I know that it is not, uh, it is not overexposed. If it was like this, something like this, or if you have a bright picture, then you will notice that this mountain is coming more and more to your right side. Or if it is to the, if the picture is very dark, then you'll notice that it's coming more and more to the left side. So by keeping this mountain in the middle somewhere, then you're having a well exposed picture. All right, uh, the brightness is fine. Keeping that in mind, if I were to move the histogram down here or move it up there, then that will affect the entire picture. All right, so I can keep the spot here and I can actually have many more spots all across the line. And sometimes the most popular way of ed editing is to bring this part little down and this part little up. And by doing that, we get an S over here. This is called the popular S curve and a lot of Instagram filters use these. Um, but this is, again, like I mentioned earlier, a little advanced, this one. So until you understand this later on, I would not recommend that you uh, touch the curves here. Okay? So I just hope that I just explain all this so that you will have a short understanding of this. All right, moving on, uh, you can come to the white balance. White balance here is to do with, uh, Let's say you're in a hotel 
and you take a picture um, of, you, let's say you're at a wedding and then the bride is wearing a white dress and then you take a picture, but because of the hotel lights, um, the dress looks yellow or it looks off, like the, the white does not look white then you can come here and use these settings for that. Now, let's say I had a white spot on the picture. I currently do not. I have a gray spot, but that's not white. If I did have a white spot, then I can click on this eyedrop tool over here and I can move my thing around to find that white spot. And once I do select that, then it'll automatically adjust the white balance for me. But since I don't have a white spot, I can still adjust that by moving my finger to the left and right. Now, remember I spoke about the first, first option where we had, where we could select the warm. This is similar to that. So by coming to the left, and the picture becomes cold, and by going to the right, picture becomes warm. Or, yeah, it becomes warm. So in this case, I feel like uh, a little warm is fine. No need to go too much. And you also have another option called tint. Now in the tint, uh, it has more to do with whether your picture is greenish or purplish. Some cameras are not always uh, on point. Um, you may notice this with different companies, cameras like for example, Sony pictures might be a little purplish their pictures or uh, iPhone pictures may be a little warmer than usual. Uh, so you can come here and adjust that so that you get the picture to be as perfect as you want it to be. All right, sometimes the picture might be a little too green, then you can come here and adjust that setting as well. All right, if it's a little too green, you can move it to the right to adjust that by compensating by adding some purple. Hmm. All right, so temperature is basically making it warm or cold and adjusting that so that your picture looks uh, as, make, make it look the way that you want it to be. All right, there's no uh, exact way it has to be. The standard would be to make whites look white without making the white look yellow or bluish, but have it look pure white. So that is why we have the setting here to adjust the whites and make it look that way. Now the crop button is uh, going to be your friend if you haven't framed your picture properly. All right, what do I mean by that? Now look at this over here. Um, I tried to make the flower stay in the center. Uh, I have these lines here, and if you may remember, it is uh, from the rule of thirds. Uh, using these lines, I wanted to center the flower in the picture, all right? But you'll notice that the petals are a little to the right, and they're not exactly in the center. Uh, so what do I do? What I can do is I can bring this, I can swipe in from the left side, and I can adjust this so that it is in the center. And this can be done in any, any shape. Uh, and if you're not able to do it in any shape, please select this button here and you have some fixed ratios here. Some popular ones are 16 by nine uh, for phones. Uh, phone screens are 16 by nine ratio. Uh, Instagram allows you to post uh, five by four or four by three and square pictures. And you can, if you, want, if you want the aspect ratio of your picture to stay the same, you can select original. And then as you adjust, the aspect ratio will stay the same. But it will not. Uh, but it will still allow you to change the cropping within. So you can select free, and then you can change the aspect ratio as you wish. You can want if you want it tall for your phone, or if you want it wide for your laptop screen. Uh, however, you wish to crop it, you can do that. And um, using the rule of thirds here, I want to center my picture a little more and balance out the petals on the left and right. So I'll bring it like this, and I will select uh, check mark over here. Here too, if you want to see the progress that you've made so far compared to your previous edits, you can just press and hold the picture and it'll show you what the picture looks like. Just for the sake of demonstration, I'll just increase the brightness so you know how it looks like. If I press and hold the picture, then it'll show me how it was before editing. And then once I let go, it shows me how it looks like after editing, all right? I will quickly undo the edit and okay, let's proceed. To undo the edit, you can start to press the button on the top over there. Uh, and then once you press that button, you have undo option at the very top. Okay. Uh, we'll cover the second row today and then we will come to the rest a little later on. All right. Uh, rotate is very simple as you can rotate your picture all the way around. That's basically it. And this button here is to flip your picture. So if you wanted to flip it, you can do that. And another feature that you have here 
is let's say you're trying to take a picture of the horizon and then the horizon isn't straight. Then what you can do is you can, again, like how we adjust settings by moving our finger left and right, is if you, if you go to the left or right, then the picture will slowly rotate. Uh, and by doing this, you can precisely adjust to a very small degree and uh, have the picture straightened the way that you want it. Let's say you took a picture of a building and then it looks a little, little to the side crooked. Then by adjusting this, you can get it to look straight. All right, that's rotate. Um, I will be skipping perspective a little bit because that's also the next uh, advanced uh, and we'll touch expand today. Expand is a feature that is not, okay, up till now, most of the features that we saw were features that you would find in most ed editing application, uh, whether it be for your phone or for your computer, you will find this, uh, brightness and contrast, saturation, ambience, highlight, shadows, or whether it is your details, structure and sharpness, or whether it is curves or white balance or cropping or rotating, all these things you will find in 95% of editing applications um, that are specialized for editing like this, all right? I don't mean like adding filters on, on other applications. But here's a feature that I like called expand. Um, it's not found in all the applications, um, but on Snapseed, it works to a certain degree and I've used it a couple of times and it's helped me. So I wanted to share this with you. So when you select it, it'll initially select smart. Uh, I will demonstrate what it does with black and white. So you'll understand how it works in smart. When I select white, if I wanted to expand the borders of my picture a little to the right and left, I can do that. And I, I'm basically adding a frame of some sort, all right? So when I export the photo, uh, when I save the photo after editing it, I will have a white border all around. Same thing applies if it's just black, then you will have a black border around your picture, all right? But Smart some, does something differently. Smart uses uh, AI to a certain degree to try and expand that picture. And uh, it's not always perfect. I would recommend that you don't uh, rely on this too often, but uh, as long as you're only trying to, as long as your subject is in the center and you're only trying to expand to the sides, you can use this and you might get away by expanding very little. As you can see um, at the bottom left, uh, I actually had uh, my drone there, uh, but uh, this is what it looks like. But if I try to expand over there, since it does not know what it's trying to do, it is, uh, very quickly, very quickly uh, getting ruined that bottom part. All right, so I recommend that you only do this where um, do it as minimum as possible, and you can try to get your aspect ratio fixed that way. And uh, if you want to expand where there is less thing, then you can go. For example, the top is not much happening; there's only grass. So by pushing top, I'm able to have it replicate and then uh, usually uh, the picture looks decent uh, but again I would say don't rely too much on this um, it's basically artificially adding more to your picture and expanding your picture all right so that's a feature that that is there on Snapseed not all applications have these um, but it's um, useful to know about it um, I'll teach you one last thing before I go that I want that I feel like it can help you all um, if you want to edit uh, during this week. If you come down here a little bit, you will find a uh, grainy film. Uh, this is a preset uh, effect basically. And you have all these different kinds of presets at the bottom and you can select each of them individually. Uh, some of them are pretty good. Um, I found that most applications didn't have good this ones, but uh, I found that these effects here on Snapseed were pretty good. Now, what you're seeing on the screen is not exactly what I'm seeing on my screen. Um, because of Zoom, the phone is having to send a uh, little less information to, to maintain the connection. So the picture does not look as good on the screen as it does uh, in, in real, uh, real life. But like, uh, I, hope, I hope that as you are following along, you're able to see all these filters. You can select these filters and they're not, they're not like fixed. You can adjust them how, how you want them to be. By selecting the settings, you can adjust um, the grain. Um, 
if you want it to look more grainy or if you want to leave it without any grain then just push it back to zero and then you can adjust the style strength if you want it to be less of that filter then you can bring it to the left or if you want more of the filter you can bring it all the way up to, to the right and by adjusting these things you can adjust how intense or how how heavy that filter is for your picture uh, this can apply to any filter that's present here let's say there's this filter here and uh, i like it but i don't want it to be that strong so if i want to i can adjust how intense that filter is and i usually keep the grain zero because i some people like to add grain to make a picture look more vintage or classy and it's up to you and you can add that if you want to as well so that was a few of our settings here on snapseed um these were the main ones that i wanted to cover because these were your requirements uh when having to learn about digital photography uh, the requirements said that you had to learn about um, cropping and sharpening adjusting the brightness and contrast and a few things like that so these are the main ones that you had to understand now um, understand that editing cannot be learned instantly but i hope that you understood at least 80 percent of what i taught today and if you go through the video then you'll be able to understand a little bit more and like i said earlier photography is to do with experimentation so i would recommend that all of you uh, experiment, open a photo that you've clicked and then go through the settings one by one and then see what each setting does. And then by practice, by seeing what it does, you'll be able to have a better understanding yourself instead of just watching it on the screen. And by doing it, you'll be able to understand and get the picture the way you want it to be. All right. Um, that'll be it for this class today. And Okay, I'm glad that you found it interesting. Uh, I hope that you'll all be able to find some time this week to go through this and edit a few pictures. Um, I'm, I'm not going to make an assignment where you have to uh, go and click pictures this week. Um, I want all of you to take a picture that you already have, or like it, it could be a picture that you've already submitted previously for an assignment. Uh, you can take one of those pictures and then I want you to edit it. It can be uh, any of these edits that we did today, or it could be all of them, multiple ones. Um, you don't have to do only one edit. You can actually stack a couple edits. So if I wanted to do all of that, I can just uh, do all this different, different edits. And then after I click tick mark, I can do the next one. It will keep adding on, all the edits will keep adding on to what I'm doing. I'm just quickly doing some random things here just for the sake of it and then if i were to adjust all these different things they're all adding so they're not like it's not like once you do one thing the other thing is being left everything will add on to the end okay so by doing that i'm able to stack all these edits okay so i want you all to take um, take a picture that you already have and then go through some of these edits that we covered today and then you can edit that. And then um, hopefully that, uh, hopefully you'll be able to see what each of these things do. And if you have a question, you can feel free to contact me anytime and I'll help you through this. Uh, there's a lot more that you can do with Snapseed. It looks very simple right now, I understand, but uh, it's a very versatile app that I'm very happy to have come across and it can help you get very good results with your, uh, with your, with your picture. Um, so I hope that you all have a good time experimenting with this and we will close with that. If you have any doubts, I want you to raise your hand using the reaction button. Um, if you have any doubt, please raise your hand. If not, then we will have a short prayer and close. If you have any doubts, feel free to 